migration really worth? Billions to the British economy or just loose change for you and me? Polls suggest it's now top of the list of the things we care about. Tonight, those for and against immigration go head to head and try to convince the politicians. We're now facing the largest wave of immigration in our history. I believe that the government's arguments for this, and especially their economic arguments, are paper thin. I'm going to put the case why migrant workers are good for Britain. <laughs> Good evening. We're going to debate tonight what is, according to the opinion polls, one of the hottest political issues facing this country, immigration. We've asked those for and against to make their case, and in a moment, they'll try to convince the politicians. Today, the anti-immigration pressure group Migration Watch claimed the benefit of immigration to each British person is just four pence a week. The equivalent, as they put it, of a third of a Mars bar a month. The other view, backed by the government and the CBI, is that immigrants do jobs that nobody else will do, often for low wages. They help the economy grow, they keep inflation down. We begin with Sir Andrew Green of Migration Watch. We now face the largest wave of immigration for nearly a thousand years. Nobody has any objection to a limited number of skilled people coming to Britain. But we're now in an entirely new situation. We have migrants arriving in Britain at the rate of about one a minute. And these are people who have to be absorbed into our society. And even if you allow for the people uh, who leave the country, we still have an extra 500 people every day. And that's placing a great strain on many aspects of our society. The government tell us about the increase in production, four billion pounds a year, quite right, you don't question that. What they don't tell us about is the increase in population. And it happens that they are proportionately almost the same. The increase in production is 0.32% of GDP, and the increase in population is 0.31. So it's tiny, tiny, 0.01, that's about four pence per week. Economics shouldn't be decisive in this. We need to look at the other strains on our society that result from such huge numbers. One of them is that a lot of the newcomers are willing to work for much less than British workers. My name is Mark Esteban Prothero, and I'm a painter and decorator. I've got no problem with them being here, but I just don't like the attitude that by business, how we, they look at us and they just say, well, you know, you're lazy, or they're better workers than you, or this. Well, you know, I can't, I'd work if it was there. It's not always there. There's gaps now. Right. And it's just not, the market has to be competitive, but now it's just it's way too much against, if you want, for want of a better word, indigenous workers. It's just weighed against us too much. You know? So they're employing foreign workers? Or they, well, they must be. It must be, part, it must be part of the equation. There are other pressures on our society as well. Uh, transport for a start. Uh, the trains are actually packed with people, as you can see. The motorways are stuffed with cars, uh, there's housing, uh, schools, uh, hospitals. Uh, it's just getting very difficult to live, particularly in the southeast of England, where 75% of migrants come to. Britain is already four times as crowded as France. We're full of people. We really do not need many more. Well, for the opposite view, we turn to the economist Philip Legrain, author of the book Immigrants, Your Country Needs Them. I think Andrew Green's report is incredibly narrow and misleading. Immigrants contribute to British society not only through the taxes that they pay, but also because they do the jobs that British people can't do or won't do. What's more, They've helped fuel Britain's longest economic boom, helping the economy to grow faster for longer without sparking inflation or raising unemployment. Over four-fifths of East Europeans who've come to Britain since 2004 are aged 18 to 34. They're young, they're mainly single, most of them don't have kids, they pay taxes, they're not allowed to claim welfare benefits, so it's utter nonsense to say that they're a drain on British society. 
as anyone who uses the NHS knows, we rely on foreign nurses and doctors. Remember a few years ago, it was almost impossible to find a plumber or a builder. Well now, thanks to the East European workers, that's no longer true. And who's looking after our old people? The fastest growing sector of employment is in old age care, and the people mainly doing that are immigrants. What are the main uh, areas of work that your agency specialises in? Uh, most offers we had from uh, construction industry, from catering, from care uh, homes. Uh, there were some offers for salesmen, for accountants' staff, for uh, office personnel. They hardly ever apply for any sorts of benefits. Uh, probably the exception being uh, child benefit or the benefits uh, for their kids if they've got families. Well, perhaps the biggest uh, economic benefit is that it makes uh, society more diverse and having a wide range of people from different backgrounds, different perspectives, that boosts creativity, it boosts innovation, it boosts productivity growth, helps the economy grow faster. It also, you look at like, the success of a place like London, it also helps attract talented people who want to live in a cosmopolitan city with a wide range of restaurants, with a wide range of different people. It makes it exciting and pleasant uh, and is good for the economy. Well, Philippe and Sir Andrew are here, plus for the Conservatives, Damien Green, and we're joined from Leeds by the Labour MP, Anne Cryer. Um, Sir Andrew, first of all, you heard Philippe Legrain's mm. point there. Rebut him. I mean, why is he wrong to say that you're too narrow in your definition of economic benefit? It's much wider than you say. Well, the first point to make is that he was talking almost entirely about East European immigrants. In fact, according to the government's figures, only one in five of our immigrants, net immigrants, uh, come from Eastern Europe. So it's a much wider issue than East Europe. And secondly, nobody, his film certainly, and nobody else has rebutted what we've said, that if you take immigration as a whole, it certainly contributes to the economy, as he says, nobody denies that, but in terms of the benefit to the native population, it is tiny, it is pennies, and, and nobody's denied that. Philippe, just on that, on that narrow point, he's right, isn't absolutely he? absolutely deny that. He is talking very, very narrowly about the contribution uh, to public finances. If, 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 if uh, immigrants contribute to boosting the rate of economic growth, to boosting the rate of productivity growth, then we are all richer as a society as a result of that. And if it's even a quarter of percent a year, after 20 years, we'll be 5% richer, which means the average person on 20 grand a year will be £1,000 richer each and every year. It's not pennies at all. Let's bring in the politicians. Anne Cryer and Leeds, uh, on this narrow economic point, are you persuaded that actually uh, it really is pennies for most of us? Uh, well, it, th there are problems, and I've had them put to me by uh, one of my local uh, employment agencies, who is a bit fed up with one of the more seedy employment agencies, undercut him considerably by employing people from Eastern Europe, paying them the minimum wage, but then docking their wage by two, three, and four pounds uh, in lieu of rent, uh, of food, uh, and uh, uh, buses and fares over here. Uh, so uh, it, it, that is no good uh, either for uh, the people who live here already or for the people who are coming into work. So, so you're, par uh, you're partly convinced by this, actually, then? Yeah, but, that no, the what I'm saying is that they are being mistreated, I think. Many of these people who are coming in, I mean, you know, we can't go too far, far down that road because we finish up with the cockle pickers on, on Morecambe Bay who were all killed. Uh, you know, you can't just say employment at any price. They sh the people who are coming in from Eastern Europe must be employed properly, at proper rates of pay, with proper accommodation. And in many areas, this is not happening. So it's no good for them, and it's no good for the firms who are competing against these rogue firms who are employing them under such conditions. Well, Damien Green, you can see why some British businesses like this, because it's a source of cheap labour. I mean, on, 